Pull. <laughs> hey, hey, just got two shots. <laughs> the thing's gone crazy. This is our new wheelie bird. And we're learning how to use it, obviously. <laughs> Good thing it didn't have a hundred uh, birds in it. Uh, sometimes it throws two, sometimes it throws one, and it was uh, continuing there. I think I've got to look at the instructions again and uh, get the settings right. But anyway, we thought we would bring that out occasionally for shotgun <laughs> shooting. That was a surprise. It's been throwing two. I guess it's set on random. Okay. Anyway, I'm Hickok45, uh, learning as I go, of course, right? And uh, we've got the Petersoli uh shotgun percussion shotgun i told you i was going to have to have one of these after uh experimenting with that howler pistol and then we did a little uh, video with a short barrel shotgun a version of this put the how to barrels on this but we haven't done the long barrel shotgun and uh i've been been looking forward to it have shot this thing some not extensively but have shot it enough to know that i really enjoy it and uh, in case you don't know it, this is probably the firearm that really won the West, the shotgun. Not necessarily just the percussion, but beginning with percussion or flintlock, the percussion, and then, of course, the break action uh, with cartridges. You had to have a shotgun if you were going West or you were living in the West. You really did. So, Pretty gun, we're gonna shoot it, talk about it. I'll be loading and uh, uh, this is a neat gun. Take a look at it, I'll be loading it. How's that, okay? It's a, it's a percussion and you gotta load it from the front. It's a front stuffer, it's a muzzle loader. We're gonna load it from the muzzle, okay? You saw hopefully the how to. I'll try to remember to put links to the others in, in the description. Uh, that we've done with this and that was kind of the cool thing about it before I load it I'll remind you the how to pistol and I bought both of these by the way we always tell you where firearms come from that way whether you like it or not you know where they came from I bought both of these and uh, and it's kind of cool they're both better solely they're both 20 gauge and the barrel off of the how to pistol this one if you haven't seen that video get back and look at it. that's a cool gun you can interchange the barrels what i'm trying to say and i don't think you'd want to put this long barrel on here even though you could but uh putting the short barrel on this one is makes an interesting firearm uh check out that one what's that video called mail order shotgun or something like that so uh that is doable but now that is cool uh we'll shoot that again sometime too of course but this is the long barrel shotgun it's the the real deal and uh, i brought out a uh oh, a break action shotgun just in case you weren't familiar we have some uh people who are really really new to firearms of course and uh and then people who are very very experienced maybe more experienced than i am that watch the videos we know because we we talk to all whatever it is 2.8 million of you occasionally actually we're talking to you now i guess but but i get a lot of questions imagine that and uh, I can't answer them all, but I see most of them. Um, so I know there's some people who are brand new to firearms and don't even own a firearm yet. Yet, key word, right? But anyway, for the folks that are really new, this is the break action. This is a more modern firearm, even though this is an old one. And you know, you put the cartridges in the, in, right in the breech. Let me reach one over here. There we go, I can reach it. You know, slides in, you load it up, shoot, eject them, shoot again, okay? Well, those were very, very common as well in the West as soon as they were made available. Okay, this one has exposed hammers. Pretty cool. Pretty, I like that shotgun. It's a neat one. But before that, it was just like a uh, muzzle loading rifle or a rifle musket. You know, you had to load from the front like most of the Civil War rifles, right? And a lot of those that were smoothbore double as a shotgun too. They fired buck and ball, they called it. Uh, and I think... Uh, correct me, uh, like three smaller balls, kind of like the number four maybe, and then one larger ball is, is what they, they would load in buck and ball, maybe three or four of these, and then one larger one, I forget the size of it. But that was a pretty devastating load, and it was also good for hunting, you know, or combat. So that's number four, we might shoot some of that again. So anyway, but I was shooting seven and a half, 
uh, size shot, bird shot on that first shot because I was shooting at birds, even though they weren't real birds, right? So let's load up a little more of that before we get it to exotic, all right? And, uh, oh man, these are neat. I, I knew when I got that how to pistol uh, and, and loaded a few times that I was going to enjoy these things. And so I'd have to bring them out again. So you put powder in first. I always load the left barrel first just to keep it straight. Make sure I don't double charge one of the barrels. Now I do the right barrel. Now when I say left or right, I'm talking about as far as you know shooting it left and right. Now as you look at it right there, that would be the opposite, right? Because it's turned around. Okay, so you put the powder in. Now I've got my wads kind of over here. Let's see, over powder wads. A couple of those. Hold your powder in place. Pretty neat. Ram it down there. Now I can use the rod on the shotgun or I can use my longer one here at the shooting table. That's more convenient as I've gone over before and shooting our uh, Civil War rifles or Hawking rifles, just whatever. Goes all the way down. Okay. And then most people use a cushion wad. And as I've said, you can cut those in half. And uh, that's where the experimentation comes in. The more I read about these, the more I see there's a lot of different ways to load it. Some people don't even use a cushion wad. Some cut them in half or even more than that in quarter and find that they get a better grouping. So there's so many different things you can do. Well, grouping, a uh, pattern, I should say, with your buckshot or your birdshot. So that's something you want to do with any shotgun. You know, check out how it patterns with even various ammo with a modern shotgun. Well, with these, you really control and, and change the pattern of uh, the, uh, I guess, the quality of the pattern. You know, some patterns could have a lot of holes in it or something. So you want an even pattern, whatever the pattern is, I guess. Uh, again, I don't hunt, so I can't speak uh, with a lot of authority or expertise, but uh, I ain't too stupid. I kind of know what they're talking about when, when they talk about that kind of thing. But just changing the types of wads, the thickness of them, whether you even use a cushion wad and all that makes a difference. Okay. I try to keep my face from over the muzzle. Whenever you're loading a muzzle loader, you want to try to keep your face uh, away from it. it. I mean, there's no caps on it. There's no fire in there now, but uh, just to be safe, you want to try to keep it pointed away from you. Load those number seven bird shot. Left barrel, then the right barrel. Got a pesky uh, yellow jacket here around me. I may have to shoot him. Uh, one of those stung me a few weeks ago. It was not fun. All right, now, even with this, here's an over powder wad or over, over a shot wad, but some people actually use a uh, cushion wad like this over, over the, uh, the shot. I guess I won't do that. I, I'll use uh, these thin ones. But there's a lot of different ways to load them. And I read about one guy that uses these over the shot. And I would think that would almost throw it off. But uh, he actually got better patterns he was writing about with that. So who knows? And if that's true, which I'm sure it was for him, uh, that would be good because it would help hold it in there. In fact, I might do that just to see if it works. How's that? Let's put some of those over. Probably you could, uh, you could cut them in half, certainly, if you're going to do that for over the shot. You know, get more mileage out of your... There we go. Oh, I apologize for bringing out a modern knife here in a muzzle loading video, but I'll put that over the shot. I'll have a little cushion over it. That would help hold it in. One thing I talked about in uh, one of the other videos, or both of them, is that... Uh, where you have two barrels, you have a different issue that normally doesn't come up with a muzzle loading rifle or, or any, any single barrel muzzle loader. When you have two barrels, you can never be too safe. You know, when you fire that, that right, I usually, I fire the right barrel first always, but uh, when I fire that one, you know, that recoil and everything, it can jar your load loose in this barrel, okay, in chamber, and it can move your load and everything out a little bit. Uh, which is not good, you know, if, if you've been around a while, you know, one of the things that, that I talk about a lot, anybody, uh, if you're involved in muzzle loading, that's so important is the ball or the shot, the lead, whatever it is, it needs to be down against the powder. That's more important, really, than how much powder you use, okay? Because otherwise you have a pipe bomb. Say your, your shot or your ball moves on you and it's out here somewhere and your powder charge and wads are down here, 
Well, essentially, you've got a pipe bomb. You've got all the space between there. You have a pipe bomb, all right? <laughs> you don't want a pipe bomb. It's almost like having your, your barrel clogged with mud out here at the end, see? So if the ball's out here or the shot or whatever, it's just not, not good, all right? But I've experimented with the wads I've been using and you know, all the various configurations I have here, these both of these sets of barrels, and I'm not seeing any movement. They're being held in there nice, nice and tight, all right? So but that's something you want to check with your gun. All right, so it's loaded, but it's really not too dangerous. Why not? You know the answer. There's no fire. There's no caps, all right? So we've got bird shot, and I'm not gonna shoot any more clay pigeons or at them. <laughs> I tell you, I do a little skeet shooting about once every three years, and uh, I, I think it's fun. Or go shoot sporting clays about once every five years with somebody. And it is fun. I'm going to let that hammer down gently in this one, too. So now it's loaded. Uh, and I am not that good at it because I don't do much of it. It's a very humbling experience. It really is. Because <laughs> I end up with one of the lowest scores. Let's just go ahead and uh, let's take out a two liter. I won't even cock the other one. <laughs> Hard to see through the smoke. Let's shoot this target. Yeah, there's some bird shot on it. <laughs> Petter Soli. Uh, again, it's a pretty gun. Oh, I love, I love the smell of black powder, okay? I used to shoot Frontier cartridge in uh, cowboy action shooting for several years. That's all I shot. And I loaded a lot of cartridges, still have a lot of them, with black powder and 45 Colt, 4570 and shotgun shells and everything. So I had a lot of cleanup to do when I came home from the matches, but it was fun. That was, talk about a real cowboy. If you want to be a real cowboy, shoot black powder cartridges. Why? Because that's what everybody had back in the 1860s, 70s, 80s, you know, uh, 90s even probably, you know, black powder in those cartridges too. They made all the same smoke. They should, you know, in the movies. Okay. So anyway, there it is. Uh, pretty gun. Again, the shotgun was extremely important, uh, extremely important. A lot of the rifles of the day, whether it's the 1873 or whatever it was, or the handguns were, were more expensive than some of the rifles or some of the shotguns. So if you were headed west in a covered wagon, you really needed something that was versatile if possible. And a shotgun gave you that versatility. So it in a lot of ways is the gun that won the west. And I should have closed that up before I fired probably. Uh, because you saw what I've done here. I, I've shot that. Let's load up some uh, some heavier heavier stuff here. Uh, something like that or a buck and ball like I was talking about. Uh, bigger balls uh, with a couple of these. You could take out about any kind of big game and that would do the job. So, like I'll run a patch down. I haven't done that yet. And I'll show you this. I'll load some of this in and then I'll... Uh, maybe do a, uh, a ball, an actual ball, and then we'll uh, maybe do some speed loading, who knows? Oh man, these are, these are neat. Again, I preached to you about this. If you never tried muzzle loading, I hope you do. You probably saw the recent video we posted on that inline, and uh, you know, that, that was a full, cool gun. I was pleasantly surprised at how it felt and how it shot and everything. But uh, this is my first love, as you know. I did that one for you guys, okay? Well, we do all of them for you guys, gals. But uh, the inline, it was requested. It was something we hadn't done. And I thought, why not? Why not? We'll do one of those just for kicks. All right, powder. Remember the powder goes in first. Why? Yeah, you know. You know. I'll tell you. This is neat. I use this dipper. This is not an antique dipper. I've got an old antique dipper, but this one just works better because of the way it's cut around the top. It just works so much better, <laughs> I have to say. All right, now I need over powder. And these wads and all this stuff, is, it's, is, it's simple to find. It's, it's, you can go online to any place. I get it at Track of the Wolf or I pick it up at Friendship Indiana at the muzzle loading chute. It's, uh, it's, it's around. So none of this is hard to find. Uh, no matter what size or gauge you're shooting, not a problem. All right, let's put in a couple of wads here, uh, cushion wads. 
Now I have sprayed some ballast on these, so I, they are lubed to some extent. You're supposed to lube them, and you'll find as many opinions on what to lube them with as there are people. So it's good to lube them a little bit. All right. Yeah, okay. Make sure my order there. All right, so cushion wad. And now we're gonna put some of these big, big boys in here. Oh yeah, look at that. Left barrel, Get my face from over it. Another barrel. Uh, I don't know if I got it full or not. Yeah, that's enough. Man, maybe just a couple more there. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then I'll use uh, just the regular over powder. Get my body from over that. And my overshot wad. They're thinner. Their only purpose is to keep it from rolling out the barrel. Okay, that's it. And I don't know, those, I hope this barrel is a little bit bigger than my howdah. I think I'm gonna use a uh, another cushion wad. I'm gonna do that again. I kind of like the idea that, that way it's not gonna come out on me. And especially, now I'm just standing here loading and then shooting. If you were in the field hunting, Carrying the, the shotgun a while and everything, you know, it'd be even a, uh, more of an issue. You wouldn't want to be climbing over a log and uh, all your shot roll out the barrel or something. All right. So again, there's no fire, so it's it's safe until you put the fire on it. The caps. So we got number four buck we're shooting here, which actually is one of my favorite uh, shotgun loads, shotgun shell loads modern shotguns for defensive uses maybe i'll put this on that watermelon this ought to take it out if i can hit it all right let's take him out <laughs> not bad for a muzzle loader is it and we have another shot let's uh i'll tell you what this is you can see it hit let's shoot that uh, tombstone now let's shoot the cowboy down there <laughs> there you go. That'd be a world of hurt. A world of hurt, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, man, these are fun. They really are. Uh, look at that. Watermelon on the barrel. Oh, no. I'll have to go read what you do about that when you get watermelon on the barrel. Okay. We've got a lot of junk out here, but we kind of need it. Now, one thing I want to do, uh, too, and I'll go ahead and do it before I forget, is, again, in uh, illustrating the versatility you could take out a, you know, a big game with that, especially if you had a, another big ball in there. You know, um, I think it was a 38 cal I don't know, what, 38 caliber ball or something. I've got a little pack that they used during the Civil War even uh, called Ball and Buck. I got it at a Civil War shop, and it had three or four of these in it and then one larger ball. And uh, that would be a nice load, really a nice load. So I'm not going to put, uh, I'm not going to uh, brush it out. Uh, one advantage of these modern shotguns is you have uh, chrome lined barrels. I don't think many of Daniel Boone's were chrome lined, okay? But, uh, but that is an advantage. It, it makes it load more smoothly. Now, I went to this ball. I've got some balls in here, but I went to these. I dug these out. I was taking a couple of shots earlier. These are sized a little differently. These are uh, these. Uh, I don't know who makes these, Brush Creek or something? But uh, Rush Creek, I don't know. These are 600 thousandths, okay, in size. They're actually exactly 60 caliber. I was using uh, kind of a 610, I think, and those are, they work, but they're kind of tight with these patches I have, a little tougher to load. So let me get some uh, powder in first, and then we will go from there. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna load, you know, 60 caliber balls in this thing, again, illustrating the versatility of the shotgun back in the day or any time. Now it is a smooth bore, so you weren't gonna pick off a deer at 300 yards with it, so no rifling, so no exceptional accuracy or anything. But, uh, you know, kind of like handgun hunting or bow hunting or whatever, you just have to get a little closer and you could take care of business. 60 caliber ball would do the job. Now here's another one. I've read uh, lots of ways people load these. When they use a ball, 
you could almost just do like you do a regular rifle or musket or something just put the powder in and patch the ball down there but a lot of people get a better result and get less fouling if they put a over powder wad they say and so that's one reason i did that and even use the cushion wads you know that's interesting uh so i'm gonna do that the cushion wad and uh, some cut them in half i'll just put whole ones down okay so we've got powder i'm gonna put the cushion wad even though they're patching the ball like you'll see okay so i'll run those down so this thing can be uh, for birds with bird shot you could put buck and ball in it as i talked about number four as i shot or you could just patch a round ball like this 60 caliber ball don't you love how dirty you get shooting black powder real black powder you want the spur facing upward ideally okay and i've got a ball starter here i'll use now these yeah these go in pretty easily and put the other one in this is why it's important or it, it makes sense to always do one barrel well you're always going to do one barrel first but i mean do the same barrel first okay that way you know how you know just through the the habit and everything okay you know you got both of them in and that down on the front, I can feel it. It's against the, the cushion. All right, it's pretty snug, but I'm still going to put. Uh, I'm going to put. I'm going to put one of these healthier over powder wads. Actually, they're a little tighter, just to make sure that thing is held in there. Because I definitely don't want that ball moving on me in that off barrel, the one I shoot second. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty tight. So. Yeah. All right. So now we have essentially uh, a little bit smaller. There were a lot of 75, 73 caliber uh, smoothbore firearms in the Revolutionary War. You've seen the brown best we have. Shoots a big old ball. It's a smoothbore flintlock. Well, you essentially got a, a rifle. Well, not a rifle, but you're shooting one ball, big chunk of lead, and uh, you're not going to get a lot of accuracy out of it. But at close range, this this would have taken care maybe of big grizz. Okay, on the frontier, you got big grizz bugging you, uh, about to eat you. Maybe you don't want bird shot. You don't want just a shotgun. Maybe you uh, maybe you even have bird shot in one barrel and you have a ball like that in the other. I don't know. I've not been on the frontier. So, and it works. It shoots uh it's easier for me to hit with than that the old brown bass for example see that cowboy there what's me missing oh that hit him pretty hard didn't it let's try that uh, tombstone boom okay so at that range dead center and uh now i knew having shot those that the right barrel tends to want to go just a little bit to the left. So I was holding, you know, I was allowing for that kind of Kentucky windage. But once you've shot your firearm and you've worked on your patterning and everything with bird shot, you, you get to know, you know, how to load it properly, how to load it to, to its best advantage and, and all that stuff. So it, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so pretty versatile. You can see why if you didn't have a lot of money and they weren't all uh, double barrel and you're riding west, uh, a shotgun if you could only have one firearm it'd be hard to beat a shotgun because of all these different loads you could use you know get game you know rabbits birds uh, just whatever deer you had to uh, and, and feed the family you know so very very versatile uh, and, and a lot of them were just single shot you know and a lot of them used old uh, Civil War uh, smooth bores left over you know muskets and things from the civil war because you could do the same thing with those you could load all these things i'm doing you had the right size you know balls and all that kind of thing you could have a shotgun just like with my brown best it is also a shotgun if i wanted to be okay i could bring it out here and load all this stuff in it i've got some big balls i've got you know of course the bird shot the number four you could do that with it and uh and that was uh, fairly common as i understand so what else was there about it that I wanted to, to tell you uh, before I, I might load a couple of speed loads here? Uh, uh, again, it's just a lot of fun. If you do muzzle loading, 
uh, I highly recommend you get your hands on a shotgun. And I didn't anticipate how much fun it would be. It's messy, but hey, if you're a real shooter, uh, you do more than just talk about shooting. You actually don't mind getting your hands dirty and you, you enjoy different sorts of firearms. You, sh you shoot different things whenever you get a You would enjoy it if you're a, a true uh, shooter, a true, I want to say gun nut. <laughs> I know that's a negative term, but you know, we use it lovingly. Uh, if you really are a gun nut like me, you can use that phrase, right? Uh, it's when the anti-gunners and the gun banners use it that we don't like it. But if you really do enjoy firearms of all types, I don't know how you can not, not enjoy this. So uh, I'm gonna load, I'm gonna load one or two here pretty quickly. And uh, cause most of you haven't seen, uh, you know, I used to be an athlete, believe it or not. And I have some skills when I really wanna put them uh, into action. So I, I don't like to show off, you know, I, show offs bother me. You know, arrogant people are always showing off. They really are a turn off to me. But if you don't mind, I'm gonna show off just a little bit, okay? Okay, how was that for speed? Pretty quick, huh? Only problem was I was loading a little too quickly because I don't know if you noticed. Well, it's a good test for you. I, I didn't put the cushion wads in before the buckshot. But again, there's probably some people who do that and get a better pattern, you know, in their particular gun. You know, I did use the over powder wad, but actually what I normally do is I put the cushions in after that and then I put the shot, okay? So that's okay. We'll see how it does. I'll bet he'll still take out a two liter without any trouble. What did I tell you? <laughs> It'll take out two two liters without any trouble. So that's pretty cool. Oh man. Oh man, I don't know. I, that's probably enough shooting uh, of the thing. And uh, you take, uh, I'll, I will link to the other videos and show you, pull that wedge out the barrel comes right off uh, for cleaning and uh, again it's chrome line so it's really not that hard to clean you know so I have toothbrushes here and all that kind of thing I use for that I have picks here there's things you want to do if you're out shooting it a lot you know, like whatever 30 40 times you want to make sure your your nipples are clear you run a uh, pick in there or a, a stiff pipe cleaner I've got uh, yeah a little needle little pick here if it starts to get clogged on you and that's the stuff you'd want to have with you in your possibles bag on your shoulder you know if you're out hunting if your name is daniel boone davy crockett uh and all the things that you would need uh and and you wouldn't be having all this out <laughs> obviously if you're out trekking through the woods uh there's ways to to carry that with you and even have pre-loads uh pre-measured uh, uh pretty well so there are so many people that shoot these. There I go again, pulling that, didn't mean to do that. Uh, it's not great to drop the hammers on the, the naked nipple, you know, you need to have a cap on there by and large. But a lot of people use these to hunt a uh, dove, uh, just hunt everything. And they're really, really into it. And, uh, and uh, they've, they've shot their firearm enough. I've talked with some folks at Friendship. Well, one of you viewers, in fact, he was a viewer. I mentioned that in another video. They talked about the, the load he used and what gave him the best groups because he actually competes with his. But it's a it's a it's an endeavor that a lot of people are involved in. So just something else that that uh, to tempt you, right, in terms of uh, of of uh, I don't know an area of shooting. And maybe you're new, relatively new to shooting. You haven't really found the area that is your niche yet. You really kind of don't know if you get into things. You know you know what my niche is, don't you? It's everything, uh, and always has been, long before YouTube existed. Uh, I was shooting uh, big revolvers, 44s, and all that kind of stuff, single actions, and uh, 1911, and I went out to a range in Franklin, Tennessee, and a guy introduced me to muzzle loading, and I was kind of hooked, at least as uh, for part of my hobby. And so I've always had a muzzle loader ever since and have brought them out and shot them occasionally. So it's not my first love, but it, it is something I, I like. I like a lot. So anyway, 
20 gauge, this is this one happens to be Petersoli. There's a lot of them around. There's old ones you can find. You can get them in 12 gauge and different uh, gauges. Uh, I don't know what else I forgot to tell you about that I know. But uh, some of you know a lot more than I do, of course, because you have been doing this a long time. Uh, I just got into it recently, and I know enough about it to be dangerous and to know I enjoy it. So, uh, like I say, this is one I bought, and uh, I had a little trouble finding it. I wanted it in 20 gauge. You might ask, why did I get a 12? Why did I not get a 12? Well, I had the Halda in 20. I don't know if they even make that in 12. I, I didn't see one anyway. So when I ordered that, bought it. Uh, I got to looking at them, and I realized there's going to be some interchangeability here, maybe, and also all the same wads and, and uh, round balls and everything would interchange, uh, loading rods and all that sort of thing. So I'll just get a 20, you know, what, what difference does it make? And uh, so I do, that's why I have a 20 gauge, and I, I like it uh, quite a lot. It's uh, it's pretty cool. So we appreciate, uh, price wise, I think this. Um, around 900 I think they're not cheap that's one reason I didn't have one sooner I know John was after me to buy one we'd go up to Dixie Gunworks in the, in uh, Union City Tennessee every now and then we'd see them there on a rack and uh, yeah, I'd pick that thing up it'd be kind of fun to play with and you look at it like 899 or thousand dollars and yeah I don't know maybe I'm not sure enough not that sure I finally had to bite on it so as you can see as you can see so this is mine and so is that one. Well, all three of these are, of course. Um, and that's about all I know to, to make up. I could make up some more stories about how Daniel Boone carried this very shotgun. Uh, but I won't do that because there would be a one or two of you that might believe it. And I don't, wanna, I don't want you thinking that. So, so appreciate you coming by. Appreciate you supporting the people that support us. Uh, you know, the vault -Tec safe there. We're, we don't keep black powder in that. We appreciate those, those people you know, giving us all the pistol safes that we want need or whatever so that's nice i use them and uh you know i just uh, am so happy that black powder exists because i use black powder you can see the can over there 2f and uh when i'm firing this these things okay uh it was hard for me in that inline video recently with that cva inline to use powder pellets and all those sorts of things but i did it for you guys but when I'm out shooting the, the ones that I like the most, uh, it's going to be real black, okay? Really, real black powder. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to tell you, but uh, it's probably a made-up story, so I won't tell you. Life is good. Oh man, you guys watched that whole video? Well, not one to judge, but while you're here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program. They offer hands-on experience. They also accept GI Bill. You can get certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So check them out when you get a chance over at sdi.edu. Also, uh, some of the new targets you may have noticed on our range are from shootsomesteel.com. So maybe give their website a look and also um, the vault safe that you might have seen on our shooting table, you can check those out at vault Also, don't forget to check out our website, uh, hickok45.com. You can find all of our links to the different uh, social media sites that you can find us on, like full30.com, um, the real hickok45 on Twitter, I mean on uh, Instagram, hickok45 on Twitter, uh, hickok45 on Facebook. There's also the hickok45 and son YouTube channel. Um, so just go to the website and you'll find most of that stuff and our t-shirts of course um, you can find our, all of our merchandise for sale there on hickok45.com and man I guess you guys are going to have to find something else to watch on YouTube because that's it that's all I have to say appreciate it